to be before a grand jury, this was really perhaps a foregone conclusion that this might happen. Let me ask you, because as I understand it, intent is key. Yeah. Here. Proving intent is key to getting beyond the indictment, getting conviction on these charges. Explain why and, and how one would go about proving intent here. Well, in order to be forthcoming with you about what they want, because they know they've got this mm -hmm. sort of Damocles. So you've got this great reporting. You've got this idea of the recording. You've got the notion of what he knew. Typically, we are the lawful custodians of documents. We need to have them returned. There was a subpoena as well. You haven't given them. Is the taped conversation that CNN and Paul and team have a, a transcript, a mm -hmm. partial transcript of, is that a, a smoking gun mm. in, in to this point of, of intent? Well, first of all, the dramatic reading of it, Paula, unbelievable, <laughs> because it gave the I didn't gravitas. Do my Trump voice, I'm yeah. telling you, you did not, but you didn't have to. With the gravitas assigned to what was said, if you just heard about it, can get that in? Is that part of it, or is there something more? And by the way, that, that, that move is one of the pieces of news. Many pieces of news in recent days is that move from a case that we thought we imagined might be uh, prosecuted here mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C. I do want to ask you, Evan, on the Espionage Act specifically, because th that is among the most serious uh, of the charges here in retaining documents the Justice Department considered but ultimately did not charge on the Espionage Act. Hard thing, right? Hard thing to prove and quite a serious charge. I explain that to folks at home. Uh, be, listen, a president being charged with any federal crime is a big right. deal. Espionage Act stands out. Right, it does. And, and this, what the, the prosecutors are going to have to do to the, in front of this jury is to show that this, the, this was something very serious. And uh, you know, as you said, it's not it's not charged uh, mm -hmm. often in some of these in in these cases, but it is to this May 11th subpoena. And Trump Attorney One Evan Corcoran and Trump Attorney Two tell Trump that they need to search for documents that would be responsive to the subpoena. They need to provide a certification mm -hmm. that there uh, had been compliance with the subpoena. Trump, in some in substance, made the following statements, among others, as memorialized by Trump Attorney One Evan Corcoran. A, I don't want anybody looking. I don't want anybody looking through my boxes. I really don't. I don't want you looking through my boxes. B, well, what if we, what happens if we just don't respond at all or don't play ball with them? C, wouldn't it be better if we just told them we don't have anything here? You know what he said? He said that it, that it was him that he was the one who deleted all her emails, the 30,000 emails, because they basically dealt with her scheduling and her going to the gym and her having beauty appointments, and he was great. And he, so she didn't get in any trouble because he said that he was the one who deleted them. Mm -hmm. So much there Lock to go through. Lock her up is the chant that we heard. So the absolutely. Way Hillary Clinton's lawyers protected her. Laura, Laura mean, Coates, lawyer present here, speaking about Corcoran, based on what you see in this document, is Corcoran testifying against the president? Yeah, he yeah. did already in a grand jury right. about Trump wanting to see photographs of the boxes. There is actual documentation that he was aware about the breadth of it. The statements that were actually made. You cannot say that I don't get to tell you, tell you anything because I'm a lawyer and you're my client if what you're asking me to do is in furtherance of a crime or a fraud. And just to, to bring the point home, just look through on page eight 